One of the most famous stories to come out of the 20th century was J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. This was a fantasy story that took place in an area called Middle Earth. In modern times, we see the idea of Middle Earth as purely fantasy. After all, science has taught us that there is no such thing as Middle Earth. However, the deeper we move into this Great Awakening, the more we realize that science is not necessarily true. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Also, a very, very, very special thank you to all of our patrons. If it were not for you, we would have a much harder time getting this channel up and running. So thank you. If you would like to join our Patreon program, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today on Mystery Monday, we are going to be covering part one of Hollow Earth. Now, first of all, I do want to acknowledge that I'm not in my normal green chair. That is because my boyfriend is in that room cooking right now, and I wanted to get this video out to you guys on time, so I moved my filming location because he can't move the kitchen. I really hope that you don't mind the change of scenery in the background. Also, a reminder again, we are disabling some of the comments on some of the videos on this channel, the more dangerous videos, if you know what I'm talking about. We know that censorship is on the rise again on this plant platform, and we really want to keep this channel up. YouTube does listen for certain words and does monitor comments on certain videos. So sometimes channel creators are held responsible for comments that are made. And so therefore we have made the decision to disable the comments on again, some of the more potent and dangerous videos just to keep this channel up and running. If we were ever taken down, we would move over to a platform like BitChute. However, the problem with BitChute is that it would be an echo chamber of everybody who has been censored. We don't want to be in an echo chamber. Those of us who still have our channels left, we want to be able to have our videos and our content reach those who are maybe not quite awake yet. So hopefully we can start planting some seeds in their head so that they can wake up and join us on the side of good. I know that most of you understand what we're going through. If it were up to us, we would not have to deal with this, but unfortunately, because we don't own the platform, we do have to try to work with it the best that we can. You will also notice that some of our videos are gonna contain some bleeps. That's because we're trying to censor out certain words that could get the channel taken down. All right, let's get started on Hollow Earth. There is so much to this theory. I was never planning on covering Hollow Earth. It's not something that I had really looked into before now, not really where my interest has been when it comes to unraveling all the um, untruths or lies we've been told about who we are and where we come from. However, when I had David Wise come onto the channel last week, I thought it would be interesting to explore some of the other theories around our home that we call Earth. If you caught the episode last Friday with Tom Sidney Bushnell, Tom Numbers from Psych Club, as well as Tarot by Janine, you will remember that Tom did ask Janine at the very end if we live on a flat Earth. The cards told her that the Earth is neither round nor flat. We don't really know what the Earth is actually like. The cards did say that what we've been taught in school is complete BS, though. 
And I think that David Wise does a really good job showing how they've manipulated photographs to try to convince us that things exist that don't really exist. My question is always, what are they trying to hide? Why are they lying to us? As David Weiss said, it doesn't really matter if the earth is flat or round because he still has to get up and go to work during the day, as to all of us. But again, why the lie? Well, if we're going to talk about the possibility of the shape of our earth, we also have to look at the possibility of having a hollow earth. And this hollow earth is not a new conspiracy. In fact, this hollow earth has been around since the beginning of time. Most ancient cultures carry the folklore of a hollow earth or beings living under the ground, including the Greek culture, the Nordic culture, the Indian culture, the Native American culture, the Scandinavian culture and the Tibetan culture. Now in part two of this series, we will go deeper into India and Tibet and some of their folklore regarding a hollow earth. Now what was so fascinating to me about this common folklore found all over the planet was the entrances into the hollow earth. Almost all these places that aren't anywhere near each other believed that there was an entrance into the hollow earth through certain caves. In fact, in Mesopotamia, a real ancient culture, they had these stories of this man who walked through these caves down into the hollow earth and came out the other side. I hope that this gives you some idea of how long this theory, this folklore, has been in our culture. And in my opinion, when I start investigating these legends or conspiracies or just basic folklore theories, it seems pretty peculiar to me to still classify something as folklore when there's an actual spot on our planet that supposedly, allegedly, allows one to enter into the world beneath our own. Now, ironically, as I say sarcastically, ironically, a lot of these locations that our ancient ancestors believed were entrances into the hollow earth have now been marked off by our governments. And in fact, it was our governments that tried to convince us that the earth was not hollow. There are many different locations all across the earth that were known to be locations to enter into the hollow earth. For example, the Grand Canyon apparently has a lot of entrances into the hollow earth, and it also has caverns that hold Egyptian mummies, which would totally blow the idea that the world was, the Americas were found by the general public in 1492. But no, the government has blocked off these taverns that hold these mummies and allegedly has also blocked off the entrance points to what our ancestors called the hollow earth. There is a cave in the southernmost point of Greece that legend states is also an entrance into the hollow earth. They also believe that it was protected by the gods. In North America, at the northmost point of the Missouri River, there is a cave called Mammoth Cave that also is allegedly an entrance into the hollow earth. And in Ireland, there are two locations that legend has it contains entrances into the hollow earth. One is called the Gate of Hell, and people throughout Ireland have spoken of stories of entities and beings that are not from our realm coming up out of the ground at night. There is also a location in County Donegal, I hope I said that right, where many priests saints, and medieval knights would go to visit what they called purgatory. The people of Ireland also allegedly claimed back, 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 long before Christianity came to Ireland, that the beings that lived under the earth came up from under the earth to teach them how to be druids. Now, if you follow along on the Dark Outpost, we did a deep dive into the druids and the amount of 
human sacrificing that went on at some of these locations. German myth also has it that there are certain locations in Germany that were entrances into Middle Earth. And who could ever forget Dante's Inferno, a book written in the 14th century that talked about a hollow earth. But by the 18th century, the royal government of the United Kingdom decided once and for all they were going to put out a narrative of what is in Middle Earth. Now, if a hollow earth does actually exist and there are beings that live in the hollow earth, it would make sense to me that the government, especially the royal government of the United Kingdom, would want to keep this a secret. In fact, there's a lot that they have kept a secret. So in 1774, they put together what is now known as the Shalian Experiment. This was conducted in a mountain in Scotland. They picked this mountain specifically because it was isolated and because it was pretty symmetrical. So they felt like they could do experiments that would measure the density of the earth. If they could measure the density of the earth, then they would know once and for all what was underneath the ground we walk on. Interestingly enough, they first tried to get Sir Isaac Newton to do this experiment, but he declined, so they went with a man named Charles Hutton. Now, Charles Hutton was an English mathematician and surveyor. Interestingly enough, he taught at the Royal Military Academy. I don't know about you guys and on your personal journey when it comes to waking up, but the main thing I know for sure is that the government is not our friend. The government is rarely, rarely honest with us. And if the government is behind any type of experiment, I like to take it with a grain of salt. And in fact, most of the experiments run by the government, I tend to believe whatever they figure out, it's probably the opposite. Even though this government-funded experiment in 1774 proved once and for all that there was nothing underneath the ground but dirt, people around the world still didn't believe them. Many in fact, a man named John Cleves Sims Jr. believed the earth was hollow. In 1818, he wrote, the opening to the inner of the earth was through the poles. This was called the hollow earth theory. And this man was considered to be the Sir Isaac Newton of the West, of the Americas. He went around and did talking lectures about the fact that there was a whole world underneath the ground we walk on. He believed there were five different spheres, different layers of activity happening beneath our feet. He also had a colleague by the name of Jeremiah N. Reynolds, who traveled with him as well. And Jeremiah N. Reynolds was a newspaper editor, explorer, and author. He continued to give lectures on the hollow earth even after John Cleves Simmons Jr.'s death. In 1839, Jeremiah and Reynolds wrote the book Mocha Dick. This influenced Herman Melville's Moby Dick, which was written in 1851. Now, interestingly enough, John Cleves Sims Jr. was so respected for his work on the hollow earth that even on his death, his son made sure that he had a special monument placed on top of his grave. Now, with the people that inhabit the hollow earth that live beneath our feet, Collectively, across the cultures, they were believed to be a more advanced civilization. They had more technology than we've had, and even though they are humanoid to an extent, they aren't necessarily human beings. Although I would not be surprised if there are some human beings that have found their way into a hollow earth and decided to live there instead of here. This makes a lot of sense when you start to look at theories like the Draco, the Anunnaki, all of these more malevolent extraterrestrial groups coming to this planet. 
This, of course, is a theory for the Rh negative bloodline, which I have extensively spoken about on this channel and other channels because I myself am an Rh negative. Also, the royal family, all Rh negative too. That's where I get it from. And all of our presidents have pretty much been RH negative as well. So there is something to this anomaly because there's only 15% of people on the planet that carry this particular bloodline. Now, the people of India believed that the people that lived under our feet were serpent people. Interesting, right? When we see stories like the Garden of Eden where the serpent convinced Eve to eat the apple, or we talk about this idea of lizard people, as Lady Diana, Princess Diana, called her in-laws the lizards. We hear about reptilians all the time, and we know that there are military tunnels under the earth, and that there are a lot of underground military bases where there have been battles taking place. We know this. This is not conspiracy anymore. This is like conspiracy fact. So before you go discrediting Hollow Earth because of this government-funded experiment that happened in the 18th century, I would look into some of this stuff. There are people that call the group that live under the Earth the Old Ones. Apparently, they were here long before humans were on this Earth, and they retreated underground to live. People say the Old Ones are extremely long-limbed, and sometimes will peep their head up just to let those in the know know when they're screwing up and need to change something on the Earth above them. Now, in 1945, a very interesting story came out in the Amazing Stories magazine. This was called The Shaver Mystery, and this was regarding a man named Richard Shaver. He claimed that he had been a guest invited to come and visit this underground world. Now, many people thought that Richard Shaver was a little bit... Uh, you know, had a, had a few screws loose. However, many people do believe his account of what happened to be extremely authentic. He said that a group of people called the Elder Race, or the Titans, first came to this planet long before human beings. They decided that they were going to make this planet home. Well, unfortunately, the sun exposure on our planet was not good for them, and they started aging faster, and therefore their lifespan was cut short. So they decided to go underground to live so that they didn't have to deal with the elements of the sun. Well, over time, this group of titans decided that they were no longer going to inhabit the Earth at all, and they left. However, when they left, they left very advanced cities under the ground that then attracted other beings to come and live there as well. Interestingly enough, Richard Shaver spoke about a mutant group, a group of mutated entities with possible human beings. And this might sound pretty silly, but we're kind of learning a little bit about this when it comes to the old um, Epstein Island. Now, another interesting group of people that believed in a hollow earth were the Koreshian Unity. Who were the Koreshian Unity? Well, for lack of a better word, they were a cult. However, most cults tend to end in a massacre in a very dramatic way, the Koreshian unity just simply kind of died off. There was no dramatic in to their commune. But who were the Koreshian unity? They were started by a man named Dr. Cyrus Teed. Dr. Cyrus Teed lived in New York. He liked to play with electricity. He lived in the latter part of the 19th century, dying in the early part of the 20th century. Well, one day, Dr. Cyrus Teed was experimenting with some electricity, used a little too much electricity, and ended up having an accident where he was knocked out for a while. While he was knocked out, he claimed to see a vision of God, where God revealed some things to him about the truth of the world. When he regained consciousness again, he decided to start going by the name Koresh. Apparently, Koresh is the Hebrew word for Cyrus, which was his original name. This name change happened around 1869. In 1870, he started the Koreshian 
unity or Christianity, where it was the base of Christianity with some basically fundamental differences in the doctrine. He had built some communes in New York as well as Chicago and San Francisco, but in 1894, he decided to purchase some land in the southern part of Florida. This is where he set up his final commune in Estero, Florida. This is now a historic site that you can go and visit. The basis of Christian unity and their teaching was understanding the earth that we live on. You see, Dr. Cyrus Teed, or at this point Koresh, taught people that we don't live on an earth, we live inside of it. In fact, he believed that we ourselves were inside a hollow earth. He basically believed, from what I can gather, that we were in a shell and that the sun worked as its own battery-operated energy source and the stars were just reflections of that energy source. Now, interestingly enough, this commune that was built in the southern part of Florida was pretty progressive for its day. Dr. Cyrus Teed, or Koresh, said that God told him that God was not a male God, but what had a father-mother aspect to it, which definitely mirrors a lot of the stuff that we're learning from the missing Gospels, especially dealing with Barbello. The Koreshian unity believed in such things as reincarnation, which we do know a lot of cultures have taught reincarnation. Even Jesus taught reincarnation, but that's been omitted from the Bible and the Christian faith. Why teach reincarnation when you can just scare the shit out of people that they're going to go to hell and therefore manipulate them with power? He also taught that we were all immortal, that we don't die. These are things, two things that I definitely believe in. I definitely believe in this idea of reincarnation, and I definitely believe that human beings don't ever die, that we are actually immortal beings. Our bodies die, but our souls don't. They also taught such practices as celibacy. This is very common in a lot of spiritual worlds as well. And in fact, deeper into the Koreshian unity, there was one group of people that procreated, but all they did was procreate. There wasn't like a romance aspect to it. And this might be part of the reason why the cult has died out, is they didn't have a lot of people to carry on the cult. They believed in the power of alchemy, and they also believed that Cyrus Teed was the second coming, was the Messiah. Now, interestingly enough, in an interview that I listened to with one of the descendants of one of the people in this cult, they never really believed like Messiah, Messiah. They just believed he was a leader and a teacher. However, when he died, they did expect his body to rise up again, which it did not. Now, something I found super interesting about the Christian unity as well is that they were very much into higher education. So here this group is really convinced that we lived in a hollow earth, that we were the hollow earth, but yet they really pushed education. That made me scratch my head a little bit because you see a lot of times in the mainstream narrative, people who believe in conspiracies are considered to be not that intelligent. However, I think that the real intelligent people are the ones that question the mainstream narrative. And it's interesting that to me that this doctor, who had all these ideas of, of equality between men and women, of, of mother, father, God, of reincarnation, of, of immortality of our soul, also acknowledged that there could be, we could be, we are on a hollow earth. Just something interesting to know going into part two. Now, when we go into part two, we are going to take a deeper look at some of the folklore involving Hollow Earth. In my opinion, a lot of the folklore is where we're going to find a lot of truth. These are stories passed on from generation to generation to generation, almost as warnings. However, if you would like for me to do a separate video that's also a deep dive into the Koreshian unity, just let me know down in the comment section below, and I will be glad to do that for you. I had no idea this cult existed until I started studying Hollow Earth. Now for part one, I'm going to leave it there for today. Just to give you a brief taste of what the Hollow Earth actually is and that it might not be as crazy as maybe you thought it was. As far as the whole mystery as to what's beneath our feet or above our head, at this point I don't have an opinion. 
I don't have an opinion on the shape of our planet. I don't have an opinion on anything anymore because I do accept that we have been lied to so much that we're going to have to unlearn a lot as we move into the new timeline of the age of Aquarius. At this point in my research, all this stuff about our planet, our galaxy, our solar system, our Earth, it's all just interesting to me. And to be honest with you, nothing shocks me any more. All right, guys, I hope that you have a wonderful Monday and a wonderful week ahead. These last few weeks and this next coming few weeks are going to be crazy around here. There is so much happening. Sometimes I feel like I can't even catch my breath, but it's all good stuff. Thank you so much to Josh McKay for doing our music. If you would like to purchase the opening song, there is a link in the description box below. And thank you so much to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.